In today's video, I'm going to go through my top five non-poker books that every poker player needs to read in 2021. Stick around to the end of the video and I'm going to give you a bonus book that you need to listen to and not read. And I'll explain more when we get there. If you're anything like me, you probably feel feel guilty when you're not going like full steam ahead into poker. So what I found was that reading was a really nice way to uh, to relax away from the game. You know, you can get away from the office, get out of the office, go to sit in the living room, you know, on the sofa, just relax, get a nice cup of coffee, and then get into a really, really good book. And, you know, I, I really enjoy reading books about mindset and performance and habits and, and things like that. So I think reading is a great way to continue your development away from the office, away from wherever you, you play. Uh, and you can, you know, make some real strides in terms of performance and habits and things like that. Remember then, these are non-poker books. So there's no poker strategy at all. No poker strategy books will be discussed in this video. Not even my book, Purposeful Practice for Poker. I promise I won't even mention it. In 2020, I decided that I would read 25 books in the whole year. So I was going to do uh, basically two books uh, a month and then somehow make time for an extra book. And I, I, read, I read 25 books. The problem was that I didn't really action any of those books. So I read a lot but I didn't really take action. And so 2021 for me is the year of action. So I actually think it's better to read, you know, five books five times rather than 25 books once. So that's why I've come up with this list of five non-poker books that you should read this year. Let's get into that list. And number five is Do Pause by Robert Poynton. This is a fantastic little book all about sort of making time for, for you, making sure that you're not just, you know, spending all your time working and not in enjoying yourself. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just looking at the back here. You know, it's talking about reset and regenerate, deepen your thinking and experiences, take back control of your time and reconnect with other people and yourself. So I mentioned in the intro that I've, I find it difficult to, you know, to switch off and to, you know, not just be like 100% into poker. So this was a really important book. Uh, my girlfriend actually bought this for me a few months into our relationship. And yeah, I, she must have noticed that I was just like completely focused on work. You know, I'm growing the business. I am coaching. I'm making content. I'm playing poker. Um, I don't think it was her way of saying, you know, you need to make time for me. Uh, I think she just wanted to me to to actually make sure that there was, uh, you know, time when I wasn't doing those things. So I think this is a, a really, really important book and, and definitely one that you should check out. And you probably haven't heard of it before. Uh, yeah, but do pause. You are not a to do list. And that that idea there of like, you know, not being, you know, you are not a to do list. You don't just have to write a list of things that you need to get done and just work through it and then go to bed and then rinse and repeat the next day. You need to make time for for relaxing, uh, which I find really, really difficult. I find it really difficult to switch off. I'm not very good at, you know, sitting and watching a TV show or watching a film. Um, I would much sooner read a book, uh, which is which is great because we're making a video right now about that. Um, but yeah, I always want to be like making making improvements, like getting getting a little bit better every single day. I, I love the idea of, of falling in with the process, right? Falling in love with the idea of getting that little bit better every single day. So it doesn't matter what you're working on, whether it's poker, whether it's life, relationships, uh, work, you know, whatever it is, you just want to try and get a little bit better every single day. One of the key ideas in this book is about machines are designed to run constantly, but humans aren't. And I think I've certainly been guilty of, of trying to just go flat out on everything that I'm trying to achieve. So, you know, you have to you have to switch off. You have to turn off the machine occasionally. You have to make time to regenerate uh, and relax. So, yeah, if you're if you're struggling with anything like that, then this book is a is a really really good read and it's going to give you hints and tips and ideas about how to do that. So, number 4, we've got Will it make the boat go faster? This is a fantastic book. It's written by uh, ben Hunt Davis and Harriet Beveridge. Ben Hunt Davis is uh, an Olympic rower and won gold at the uh, Sydney Olympics in, in 2000. And uh, yeah, now I, I believe he's uh, some kind of elite performance coach. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, this, is a, this is a great book. Uh, this book was recommended to me by uh, my good friend Andrew, aka Dwight Ninja. And the whole idea is really just asking yourself, you know, and everything that you choose to do in the day, in the week, in the year, leading up to, uh, you know, something like a, an Olympic final, or maybe you're thinking about Scoop or W Coop or other series that uh, are going on, you know, maybe you're working towards those, you know, what you got to think about is, 
ask yourself the question, will it make the boat go faster? Is this going to make me a better player? Is this going to make me a better person? If the answer is no, then maybe you don't do it. So when I read this book, I was really just thinking like, okay, so sometimes we, you know, we have the choice between doing a bit more study or watching a film, you know, we get to uh, discuss hands with friends or we go and watch Netflix. You know, so having just talked about, you know, the idea and the importance of switching off, this is kind of like the, the opposite of that and making sure that you're, you know, you're doing the right sorts of things. If you're taking too much time to relax and you're not focusing on the things that are really, really important, and, uh, the things that are going to help you get to where you want to get to, then you're probably doing things uh, in the wrong way. So while you might look at this book and think, okay, well, it's going to probably be great if you're a rower uh, and you can think about how to make the boat go faster. It's actually really good for lots of different uh, industries and ideas as well. And definitely it's really, really good for poker. So I'm looking at the back of the book here and it says create actionable goals that inspire and excite you. We need that for poker. We need to feel inspired and excited every single day. Keep motivated and grow your self-belief. We need to do that in poker as well. Bounce back from setbacks to come out stronger. That's really important. You know, you have a bad Sunday, you have a bad session, you have a bad series. You know, you, you just can't seem to win a flip. You've got to be able to come back stronger the next day. You've got to feel like the next day you're super motivated and you want to come back for more. So it also talks about creating a strong team committed to success. And, and that means just making sure that you've got the right people around you. So making sure that your study group's on the same page. You always, you know, you all want to get that much better every single day. Maybe you employ a coach. Maybe you're looking at, you know, a personal trainer, something like that. That's going to make you fitter and stronger. Um, so yeah, always important to, to get the right kind of people around you, create a strong team uh, that's committed to success. And finally, then it talks about using the simple analysis to identify the best approach and not overcomplicating things. You know, keep it simple, make it work. That's a, something that my uh, one of my teachers told me when I was about 11 years old. I tried to make this really, really complicated thing in design and technology. And my teacher, he, he basically said to me, it's not going to work. Keep it simple make it work and that's just stuck with me forever and I think that's something that's, uh, that's shared in this book as well. Keep it simple, make it work and always ask yourself the question, will it make the boat go faster? At number three we've got The Champion's Mind by Dr Jim Aframal. This book was actually recommended to me by one of my students Declan, uh, he's also a member of my group coaching program and it came recommended to him from his brother who is an elite level hurler in Ireland. Uh, if you've never heard of hurling, um, I, I had, but I actually, you know, I had to go and, and, and watch a few videos as well just to uh, to make sure it was, you know, what I was thinking it, it was. Uh, so yeah, this is a fantastic book about sort of mindset and making sure that you're focusing on, on being a champion, being a winner. I remember recently seeing a, a social media post from another of my students, Nick, and he he said you know he'd finished third in a, in a tournament and was uh, and was pretty disappointed and someone had responded to that saying you know you know uh, you know where you're at when you're disappointed by a third place you know some people see a third place you know maybe they haven't had a podium finish before and a third place is a, is a really big deal but once you've had a few third places second places first places I think that you really got this like you really get this winning mindset, this champion's mindset. And so you're almost disappointed to finish third. Like maybe you didn't do anything wrong. You just, you know, you're just disappointed. Um, so I think that like having that winning mindset is, is really, really important. If you're disappointed with a third or a second, or basically any time you didn't come first, then I think that's, uh, I think that's really, you know, really, really positive. So some of the ideas in this book that I really like then is uh, the idea that you know to become a, a champion, you need to compete with yourself and not with others. I see this a lot in, in poker where people will just you know see the results of others and think oh you know I'm not getting the same results you know why can't I win a flip deep in a tournament why can't I win a win a tournament and really kind of you know that's not the kind of mindset you really want you don't want to be comparing yourself to others you just want to compare yourself to yesterday as in like compare yourself now to where you were yesterday. So that's one of the ideas it talks about in the book. It also talks about hard work and, and work ethic. And that's something that we'll talk about later on in the video as well. You know, nothing was ever achieved without hard work. You've got to work hard. Uh, this, you know, breaking news guys, if you want to succeed in, in anything, you have to work hard. If you want to succeed in poker, poker is getting tougher. And so you have to work hard. You have to have a really, really strong work ethic. Another thing to think about from this book is that there's no such thing as stagnation because if you are not getting better, 
then you're actually getting worse because everybody else is getting better and you're getting you know further and further behind so there's no no idea of sort of like plateauing or stagnating you've got to keep you know continue to push yourself to get further and further towards and closer to your goal so this book is definitely written with athletes in mind so you know fantastic if you're a runner you know a footballer uh, you play other sport and you know, things like that but I found it really, really good for poker as well. On the front, it says how great athletes think, train and thrive. But you can absolutely change that to how great poker players think, train and thrive too. One final thought for this book and the idea from this book is that the vision of a champion is someone who's bent over, drenched in sweat, you know, at the point of exhaustion when no one else is watching. At number two, we've got Fooled by Randomness. This is a fantastic book by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. It says here, the hidden role of chance in life and in the markets. Every poker player needs to read this book to understand the, you know, the hidden role of luck within life and in poker. My favorite uh, part of this book is when it talks about survivorship bias. And I remember Jason Kuhn uh, being interviewed recently, or at least I, I saw the interview recently, and he talks about you know, how lots of people within poker are there because they they survived right in the sense that they they won a key flip you know early on in their career or they won a key flip for lots and lots of money you know there's a huge element of survivorship bias in the poker industry and this is why we should never try to compare ourselves with with others we should only ever try to compare ourselves with where we were at yesterday key thing to take from this is that you should never put the, you know the high stakes poker players or the famous poker players on a pedestal all right, don't compare yourself to them, compare yourself to you yesterday. One of the chapters in the book does a really, really good job of uh, showing you the relationship between luck, hard work, and, and long-term success. So, you know, in, in poker, there is obviously a luck element, but it's the, the players that are gonna put in the, the hardest work and, and look you know, long-term at this, they're gonna be the ones that are successful long-term as well. Going back to the idea of, of survivorship bias for a moment, I remember early on in my career, I was playing uh, a $2 turbo MTT on PokerStars. This was you know, years and years ago. And I was on a final table and I had something like 14 big. So under the gun raised, I jammed with ace queen off and he called with ace king and the flop comes um, ace king three. And I was like, okay, well, probably not gonna win this tournament. And then the turn was a queen and the river was a queen and I scooped the pot and I won that tournament. And it was like my biggest score at the time was something like $2,000, which for a $2 turbo uh, was, uh, was, you know, was a fantastic result. And so this, this idea, you know, there are gonna be times at the start of your career when you, when you run well. And I would imagine that most poker players who stick around had success early on in, in their career. And, and so this, you know, you, you've gotta be aware of that, right? You've gotta be, cognizant of how luck plays an important role in, in the development of, of your career or your development as a poker player. I was fortunate enough recently to, to win a scoop and when I went through uh, some of the hands you know I got really lucky in, in some of the moments. And so for example in the final table bubble I three bet jammed, uh, pocket nines ran into tens and, and rivered a full house. Uh, but there was also a moment earlier on in the tournament where I raised ace queen on the button for just under 30 bigs I think small blind flats, big blind flats, uh, flop comes down, you know, we completely whiff, um, but we end up seeing the small blind and the big blind get all in uh, with uh, a set of sixes and a flush draw. But what I think should have happened earlier on in the tournament is I raise and the sixes actually jams and I call with ace queen and they improve to a set, I don't improve at all, and I bust the tournament, right? So this, like, that's, that's an example of hidden luck within that tournament. And it's something that I think you know, a lot of poker players just seem to forget, you know, we would just focus on like losing a flip or winning a flip and things like that. But there, there are going to be times in a tournament where, you know, you don't even know that somebody like, I don't know, their internet went down when they had aces and you had kings. So you survived because you didn't get all in. Like this little things like this, that you, you're never going to know. And this kind of like hidden chance, hidden luck element is, uh, is prevalent in, in life. Uh, as well. A good example maybe of this is, uh, yeah, I was in, I was in London for a Christmas party with uh, my, my poker friends and we had a great night out and probably, you know, drank a little bit, a little bit too much. The following morning, I was absolutely, you know, hanging out of my wherever. All right? I was very, very hungover. I didn't feel very well. And I got a text um, from a friend of mine, hadn't seen for a, for a long time, 
and she said, do you want to meet for a coffee? And I was like, I'm and ahhing about, you know, whether or not I would, I would do this. And I, you know, I, made, I made a choice. And so maybe there isn't the kind of luck element here, but I made a choice to go and have coffee with her. And long story short, you know, we've been together two and a half years. But like, these are little things that like, I could have very easily just gone, do you know what? Like, I don't, I don't want to do this. And yeah, maybe you're thinking now, okay, but that's not chance because you actually chose to do it. But it was like, you know, at the time it was probably 50-50. Right? There was a certain element of, of probability within, uh, within that. So yeah. There's definitely a big element of, of luck in life and uh, definitely in, in poker. Um, but I think this is a really good book to help understand understand that and, and sort of show you that very often we're, you know, we're fooled by the randomness of pretty much everything. And at number one, we've got High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. This is a book that I've read most recently. It's basically broken down into six, uh, six areas. Uh, they're on the back here. Uh, you can see them here. Um, it's clarity, energy, necessity, productivity, influence, and courage. So starting off with clarity, then uh, just you know, the book helps you get clear on what it is you actually you, know, you actually want. I think that's uh, something that many many poker players, you know, do they really know what they want? They want to be? Do they want to be famous? Do they want to make loads of money? Uh, these are sort of like outcome things, and I think that actually you know it might help you, um, you know, get a bit clearer. On, on what it is you, you really want to achieve. You know, do you want happiness? Do you want freedom? Do you want money? Do you want time? You know, all of these different things. So that's a really, really good start to the book. And it talks about energy, about getting in great shape, about meditation, you know, it talks about physical and, and mental health. And I think that's a, you know, really, really important thing. And what I've realized recently is that, you know, the more exercise and meditation I do, the more productive I am throughout the day. Anytime that I feel very sluggish, and just a you know just a little bit low or down. I haven't done any exercise. I haven't done meditation. Uh, maybe I'm not you know high, uh, keeping myself hydrated. Things like that. So that's really really important. So it talks about energy, but really it's about physical and, and mental health. Uh, necessity is about you know just making sure that you're on your A game. Uh, you know who needs you to turn up today? Who needs you on your A game? That kind of thing. Just sort of like raising your own level, raising your expectations and your your standards, I suppose. Uh, productivity then really important I, I love this chapter because i often can find myself struggling with with productivity so it's all about making sure that you're really efficient and productive with your time this chapter links with other ones and you need to be clear in what you're, you're trying to achieve rather than just trying to do lots of different things you know if you're really clear and focused and you've got you know maybe an idea of like one or two things that you need to get done well then you're going to be really really productive uh, influence is about you know influencing other people, being a good role model, uh, and things like that. So I think that's a, you know, also a really really important chapter. And then finally, we've got courage and being brave and taking risks. Uh, I think a lot of high performers they they like to take risks. They like to take calculated risks, and also they they push themselves outside their comfort zone. You know, it's very easy to to stay in your comfort zone, but if you're not seeing the results you're looking for, then you probably need to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. The key quote from this fantastic book is, with the right habits, anyone can dramatically increase results and become a high performer in almost any field of endeavor. And that includes poker. It doesn't say that in the book, but it definitely can include poker. So definitely check out this book if you're interested in you know, raising your game, leveling up, and really focusing on what are high performance habits. So before I give you the bonus book that you need to listen to in 2021, let me give some honorable mentions to some books that I haven't actually listed in my top five. We've got The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, Atomic Habits by James Clear, Ego is the Enemy, also by Ryan Holiday, Mastery by Robert Greene, who I believe is actually Ryan Holiday's mentor, uh, Correct me in the comments if uh, if that's not true. The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. This, I mean, this is a this is a great book. The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod and Deep Work by Cal Newport. So all of those absolutely fantastic books. They didn't make my top five, but definitely check those out once you've got through the top five. Right then, the bonus audio book that you need to listen to in 2021 is. Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. So the reason why I left it to the end of the video to talk about is because it's an audio book, uh, you can actually get it in, in paperback, but you've got to get the audio book for, for one, one reason. Basically, it's, uh, it's narrated. I'm trying to think who the guy is. Uh, I think it's Adam Skolnick, I think, is the guy who narrates it. So he narrates the, the book uh, in the same way, you know, you would be reading the paperback. 
But the reason why the audiobook is is so much better than the paperback is that sort of after each important part of the story, the two of them, so Adam and, and David Goggins, they get together and they discuss discuss the ideas. And this is just absolutely brilliant to get this insight. So you hear the story and then the two of them uh, discuss what's going on. And, and that's why you've got to get the audiobook. Don't get the paperback. Definitely get the audiobook. It's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic listen. Uh, it starts off, you know, with Goggins's childhood, which, you know, it's a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult listen, uh, but really, really important to sort of uh, get the idea of how that shaped things uh, moving forward. Uh, but yeah, if you've never heard of, of Goggins, he's a former Navy SEAL. Uh, I think he was a former you know, world record holder for, for pull-ups. Um, he's, you know, he's done lots of things like ultra marathons and things like that. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's, he's a badass motherfucker, basically. Who's one more to carry the boats? This book was recommended to me by my friend JP. Uh, he came back from, from traveling and he spent some time in a martial arts camp. And, and I don't know if someone there had recommended this book to him, but uh, yeah, he came back and he recommended it to me. Uh, and he, you know, he arrived at, arrived at my house and he told me all about this David Goggins guy. He was wearing flip flops and, and shorts, right? And, and he said, right, well, you know, let's go for a run now. Let's just do it. I'll run in flip flops. It doesn't matter. We can run 10K in flip flops. And I was thinking like, what? Like, what, what are you talking about? Once I'd listened to the book, I absolutely understood it. It's really, it's really hard to, to listen to Can't Hurt Me and not feel motivated or inspired to get out and, and to run and to do some kind of exercise. So he talks about this idea of the 40% rule, which is, you know, once you've reached a point that you think is your maximum, that he believes that that's only 40% of what you, you can actually achieve or what you're actually capable of. And I've got a pretty good story to sort of back that up, I suppose. When I first got into running myself, I, I remember getting to a point, I was like, no, nah, I need to give up. My legs, my, you know, my legs were burning, my chest was burning. I could barely like, you know, I was gasping for breath. And I was like, I remember I was listening to the audio book at the time and I was like, nah, gotta keep going, gotta keep going, gotta keep going. And I ended up, you know, I think at that point I'd run like, I don't know, two kilometers, right? And I actually finished, uh, I, I ran 5K. And, and yet at 2K, I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna give up, I'm gonna give up. And I think that, you know, we probably, you know, many of us, have got to a point in life where, we, where we've given up, you know, that, or we think that that's our maximum. That's the point where we, we think that we need to end. You know, our body's telling us, you know, this little, little voice in our head saying, nope, that's it. You know, don't push yourself any further. That's it. That's where you need to, that's where you need to draw the line. That's where you need to stop. But actually we, we can achieve a lot more. So that's just one example for, for exercise. But in poker, same thing could happen, right? You could reach a point where you're like, yep, yeah, I'm done. Like that's, that's it. I'm, that's me done. But you've got to, you've got to keep going. So it's a really, Good, uh, good book for for learning about perseverance. Um, there's a there's another idea in the book about uh, ringing the bell. So during Navy SEAL training, uh, I believe there's there's like a brass bell in the middle of the compound, and all you need to do if you want to quit, if you want to leave, then all you need to do is to go and ring the bell three times. And if you think about that, what's going to happen in poker is lots of people are going to ring the bell. And you have to be the person that doesn't ring the bell. If you're thinking about other areas of your life, you've got to be the person who doesn't ring the bell. You are, you know, you are not going to quit. When you see other people quit, it's almost like you, it gives you sort of like a leg up. You know, if you're at Navy SEAL training and you hear that bell being rung, you're like, that's, you know, that should really give you the motivation to be like, someone else has given up, but I'm still here. And, and I really like that idea. And I think you can, you can definitely uh, use that, you know, in poker and, and, and other areas of your life. So comment down below with the number one book that you want to read this year, or the number one book that you would recommend to someone else. Uh, I really want to read them. I want to check them out. And hopefully you can give me some ideas of books that I should read as well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't done so already. I'm gonna be back soon with a brand new video, but until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.